Hello guys, and welcome back to Morrowind. I am Hijack, and this is Vidar, and he's having a stare down with his Khajiit mage. If you recall, we left off last time having borrowed uh, Sir Olinway's copy of, what was it called, Chimer of Artium? Let's see if I can find it in here. Not that one. Yes. Kaima Varmidium. Kaima Varmidium. We did that for Edwina back in Alderun. <laughs> and then we nonchalantly uh, took a nap over here. But uh, just to be on the safe side, we're not going to take this the uh, the guild guide out of here just in case she wisens up on us. We're going to go ahead and uh, take the Silt Strider. And let's get back over there. I'm waiting. Waiting. There we go. So what do you want? Uh, nothing, bud. Thanks for asking. Let's get down to the Silt Strider. Hmm. Loading seems to be taking longer than it usually does. Hopefully it'll fix itself. Uh, another beautiful morning in Vivek. Look down on the, uh, I think that's the Redoran Canton. I wonder what Edwina will have for us next. Probably find another book. Or maybe she's done with books and there's something more, a little bit more uh, interesting. Where would you like to go? My good sir, let's see. Well, I guess we will go through Balmora. We make a special trip just for you. Same low price. Great, because I need to get to Alderaan. Alright. What time is it? 3 a.m. Wow, I spent the whole day on the Silk Strider. And, and then so. Might as well go ahead All and. Right. Uh, I'm listening. Oh, hi, Louis. Might as well go ahead and uh, grab a kip, uh, read this book that we uh, picked up, and then uh, give it to Edwin in the morning. Hopefully, it's a good read. Okay. Kaima of Armidium. You have gained knowledge from this book. Your heavy armor skill increased to 16. Kaima of Armidium, Ancient Tales of the Dwemer, Part 6 by Marobar Sol. After many battles, it was clear who would win the war. The Kaimer had great skills in magic and bladery, but against the armored battalions of the Dwemer, clad in the finest shielding wrought by 
Jinago, there was little hope of their ever winning. In the interest of keeping some measure of peace in the land, Sloven, the warlord, agreed to a truce with Karanithil, Baref the Beast. In exchange for the disputed lands, Sloven gave Baref a mighty golem, which would protect the Chimer's territory from the excursions of the northern barbarians. Baref was delighted with his gift and brought it back to his camp, where all his warriors gaped in awe at it. Sparkling gold in hue, it remembers a Dwemer cavalier with a proud aspect. To test its strength, they placed the golem in the center of an arena and flung magical bolts of lightning at it. Its agility was such that few of the bolts struck it. It had the wherewithal to pivot on its hips to avoid the brunt of the attacks without losing its balance, feet firmly planted on the ground. A vault of fireballs followed, which the golem ably dodged, bending its knees and its legs to spin around the blasts. The few times it was struck, it made certain to be hit in the chest and waist, the strongest parts of its body. The troops cheered at the sight of such an agile and powerful creation. With it leading the defense, the barbarians of Skyrim would never again successfully raid their villages. They named it Kaima Varma Midium, the Hope of the Chimer. Bereth has the golem brought to his chambers with all of his, his house things. There they tested Kaima Varmidium further, its strength, its speed, its resiliency. They could find no flaw with its design. Imagine when the naked barbarians first meet this on one of their raids, laughed one of the house thanes. It is only unfortunate that it resembles a Dwemer instead of one of our own, mused Karanithil Bereth. It is revolting to think that they will have a greater respect for our other enemies than us. I think we should never accepted the peace terms that we did, said another, one of the most aggressive of the house thanes. It is too late to surprise the warlord Slovain with an attack. It is never too late to attack, said Bereth. But what of his great armored warriors? I understand, said Bereth's spymaster, that his soldiers always wake at dawn. If we strike an hour before, we can catch them defenseless, before they've had a chance to bathe, let alone don their armor. If we capture another, if we capture their armor or Janago, then we too would know the secrets of blacksmithery, said Bereth. Let it be done. We attack tomorrow, an hour before dawn. So it was settled. The Chimer army marched at night and swarmed into the Dwemer camp. They were relying on Chimer of Armidium to lead the first wave, but it malfunctioned and began attacking the Chimer's own troops. Added to that, the Dwemer were fully armored, well rested, and eager for battle. The surprise was turned, and most of the high ranking Chimer, including Karanithil Bereth the Beast, were captured. Though they were too proud to ask, Slovin explained to them that he had been warned of their attack by a calling by one of his own men. What man of yours is in our camp? sneered Bereth. Kaima Varmidium, standing erect by the side of the captured, removed its head. Within its middle body was Janago, the armorer. A Dwemer child of eight can create a golem, he explained, but only a truly great warrior and armorer can pretend to be one. Publisher's note. This is one of the few tales in this collection which can actually be traced to the Dwemer. The wording of the story is quite different from the older versions in Altmeris, but the essence is the same. Chimer of Armidia may be the Dwemer Inchar Marther Nimdoms. The word occurs several times in plans of Dwemer armor and Animunculi, but its meaning is not known. It is almost certainly not hope of the Chimer, however. The Dwemer were probably the first to use heavy armors. It is important to note how a man dressed in armor could fool many of the Chimer of this, in this story. Also note how the Chimer warriors react. When this story was first told, armor that covered the whole body must have still been uncommon and new. Whereas even then, Dwemer creations like Golems and Centurions were well known. In a rare scholarly moment, Marobar's soul leaves a few pieces of the original story intact, such as parts of the original line in Aldmeris. A Dwemer of Eight can create a Golem, but, it, but an eight of Dwemer can become one. Another aspect of this legend that scholars like myself find interesting is the mention of the calling. In this legend and in others there is a suggestion that the Dwemer race as a whole had some sort of silent and magical communication. There are records of the Sigic Order which suggest they too share this secret. Whatever the case, there are no documented spells of calling. 
The Cyrodiil historian Borgulusius Melier first proposed this as a solution to the disappearance of the Dwemer. He theorized that in the First Era 668, the Dwemer enclaves were called together by one of their powerful philosopher sorcerers, Kagranak, in some documents, to embark on a great journey. One of such sublime profundity that they abandon all their cities and lands to join the quest to foreign climes as an entire culture. Hmm, interesting. Let's go ahead and uh, get at least a few hours sleep. Alright, now let's give this book, which actually was much more interesting than the last one we read, to Edwina. Did you get Camera of Armidium? Yes, I did. Here you go. Thank you, Vitor. I will return the book to you soon, but in the meantime, I have more duties for you. Oh, well, what you got? I have been distracted from my studies by several reports from Margan. Apparently, there is some sort of disturbance at Hulin's hut. Hulin's hut? Since Hulin is a member of the guild, we really ought to do something about the disturbance. I simply haven't had time to do it myself. My research is at an absolute critical phase. Would you go to Margan and take a look for me? Yeah, sure. Excellent, Bidar. Go to Margan. I'm sure someone there can give you further directions. Take care of this for me so I can continue my studies in peace. How right. does the day greet you, friend? Uh, quite well, Edwina. Thank you. Of course, and now, let's see. Let's actually consult uh, the journal. So we got Hulin's Hut and Margan that we need to investigate. Uh, let's see. Conjuration expert, blah, blah, blah. Ah, uh, yes, the pilgrimages. Let's see. Let's check the pilgrim's path and see where we're doing with that. Stop the moon. Shrine of daring. Uh, Shrine of generosity. Puzzle canal is complete. Shrine of courtesy. And the puzzle canal. Mask of Vivek. Here we go. Shrine of justice. Uh, near the altar is Vivek's ash mask. In the days of fire, when Dagoth Or first crept back into Red Mountain and awakened it, Vivek led refugees here as they fled the ash and blight. Wary, they rested here a while. When Vivek awoke, he found himself and all his followers encased in casts of gray ash. Frozen like a sleeping statue and unable to free himself or help his people, Vivek was filled with despair. Vivek's tears weakened his ash cast. He tore the ash from his perished followers, breathed life into their lungs, and cured them of the blight. This is Vivek's heroism. His tender heart provides strength when his might fails. The Shrine of Justice is guarded within the Nisus Temple, in the village of Nisus, northwest by road from the town of Alderun, where you, when you address this shrine, it is customary to leave a potion of cure comma disease as a token of your respect for justice. Suitable potions may be purchased from the temple. Homemade potions are not acceptable. Cure comma disease, huh? And I do believe... Yes, Nisus is here. We do not know where Margan is, actually. Hmm. Well, maybe we can, maybe the, the Silt Strider can take us there. Sir? Hey, hey Louis. You know what? Let's, uh,. Let's go ahead and uh, have some breakfast. Hang out out here. Maybe yak it up with Louie a little bit. Before we head on out. Alright, friend. Where can you take me? Okay, you can take me to both Nisus and Margan. Margan must be closer because it's cheaper. Okay, let's go there. Let's, check. Let's find out what's going on at Hulin's hut. Why walk when you can ride? Yes, why indeed. Okay. Very good. Yes, excuse me. Red Rangard. Ah, can you tell me about Hulin's hut? 
It's outside the town walls to the southeast, near the shrine. There's a shrine, huh? What's this? Outpost? Okay, outside the town to the southeast. Yeah, so I'm going. So southeast is this way. Is it down here? Hmm. What time is it? It's 1 p.m. something. What are, what are these things? I don't know. Hmm. Is this Huleen's hut? This is Huleen's hut. Huleen's hut, Scampson. Wait, maybe there's more. Common robe. The doors of the spirit. Uh huh. Who are you? What do you want? Is the scamp really gone? Thank you, whoever you are. This is all my fault. Hmm. Thanks for killing the scamp, Vidar. At first, he did everything I told him, but he tricked me. He wasn't really under my control. Then he started tearing the place up, and he took all my clothes, and I locked myself in the closet, and it's been just horrible. I don't want to be a sorcerer anymore. I don't ever, I don't want, I won't ever summon another Daedra as long as I live. Alright, well, where's Huleen? Listian. Put some clothes on. Hmm. Well, might as well look around Margan. Uh, this way. Can I get in over here? <laughs> this place seems to be pretty secure. Shed our neurons hut. Hmm. Commoner. Somebody's hut. What was that? Ah, hello, archers. Gaggle of archers is hanging out. Warrior. Kind Irashura. You have a nice name. Welcome to Margan, Vidar. I'm Kind Irashura. Margan is the site of Holy Tower Shrine, favorite place of pilgrimage for the Temple Faithful. Can I help you find someone in particular? Yeah, can you tell me where Huleen is? Huleen has a little shell right outside town here. She's our local sorceress. I haven't seen her lately, though. I wonder where she went. Yeah, I didn't see her in there. Let's 
Uh, let's see. I spoke with Listy and Berlis, who leans apprentice. He apparently summoned a scamp and then lost control, but everything seems to be under control now. Well, I guess Hulene just left. <laughs> Once that guy, uh... There's a shrine here. Magic Rock of Margan. Traveler? Hello, Vidar. Are you here for your fortune? How do you know my name? I am a seer. I know more about you than just your name, Vidar. What about my fortune? I am a seer. The only in Vardenfell whose services are available to anyone. While there are many things I can see, much remains completely hidden, and a few is veiled. For 100 gold, I will tell you tell your fortune. I warn you, though, some of what I see may be cryptic. And other you might wish unknown. Hmm, my fortune, huh? Alright. Very well. Ah, yes. Interesting. You'll have to make a choice between your flesh or your mind, and there is no much and there is so much killing, so much death yet to come, Vidar. Seek out the false ones. And let light where it has not been for centuries to awaken the sleepers and dreamers. Return to me when many moons have passed and I may have a clearer vision. Uh, what the hell does that mean? I cannot tell you, for even I do not know. Thanks, bud. That was, uh... The fuck? that up it you must be doing well for yourself uh, can you tell me about this shrine what's, what's up with this here Mayroon's Dagon held this rock high above the Dunmer Vivek taunted Mayroon's Dagon so that the Dagon threw the rock at Vivek instead of the people Hello, Anhedra. I am Anhedra. If you are a pilgrim, read the inscription on the stupid rock. Taunt the Daedra. <laughs> Alright. Your threats are weak like your flesh, mortal. Continue with your insults, mortal. I long to feast on your marrow. Ha! Fine words from one born from the wrong end of a guar. After I kill you, I will rape your corpse. Don't worry. I'll be gentle. Oh, I may have just made a mistake. Uh. Hey, draw a sword! Ugh. Don't mind if I do. Fuck you, Daedra. Hello, Pilgrim. Did you see that? That's right, I, I own this guy. Of course, uh, I want to try to heal myself. What was it? Uh, Veloth's Grace. Mighty wizard, can't you tell? <laughs> okay. Anyway, that was. Oh, maybe is there anything else in here? Oh, hello. Uh, my pleasure, Vidar. I am Selen Ravel. What can I do for you? Is this your first ta visit to Morgan? Yeah, it is. A quiet but growing place. I wouldn't mind it being quieter as it once was, frankly. That would leave me more time for my researches, you see. I see. What do you sell? Uh, oh, do you have a cure common disease potion? Apparently you don't. Varieties of faith. 
Alright. What kind of spells you get? Burden of Sin. Wild Spell Drinker. Troll Strength. Fortify Strength 10 points for 60 seconds. Vex Mercy. Alright. Thank you. Storeroom. Hello, Gary. Welcome, Vidar. I'm Gary, and this is Margan. Are you here on pilgrimages? On pilgrimage, most visitors most visitors here come to see the Holy Temple Shrine. How about you? Um. Yeah. Well, I was just passing through, really. A nice little stop on the in the north of Ardenville. Margan is a Red Wren settlement. I like the Red Wren. They have a sense of honor, dignity, and general concern for the well-being of the public. Unlike those insane Telvanni wizards or the corrupt Drake-loving Halalu. Let's see. All right. Oh, talk to you later, busy buddy. Guy, so if you could hurry this up. Yeah. Take it easy. Hello. Okay, I'm listening. Oh, hello, Sinia. Uh, I'm Sinia, and this is Margan. Uh, what's your background? I'm Sinia, Gary's sister. Oh, how about that? What are you gonna say about Margan? A town right off of the ghost fence. The creatures are kind of creepy, and they sometimes break through. But that is why we have people like Brens to protect us. Hmm, who's Brens? To trade. I'm just a commoner in Margan. Not in very interesting, I know. But one day I hope to get out and adventure like my brother used to. Okay. See ya. What are you guys doing hanging out here? Yeah. Fuck you. Okay. Anything else going on here? Doesn't really look like it. How about you, commoner? Can I help you? Nope. Doesn't look like you can. Um, I guess we got some shops over here. Or at least a shop. Hello, Ashlander. And this trade house. Let's see. Maybe I can pick up some lunch. Uh huh. An orc. Ah, oh, that's your helmet. You are a warrior. Hey, Juju. Hello, uh, Miss Andis. Good day, I'm Mance Andis, publican of the Andis Trade House here in Margan. We rent beds, and I have a limited selection of goods for barter. If you're new here, I can also tell you where to look for other services, or a specific place nearby. If you're looking for someone in particular, I may be able to help. Actually, uh, I'd like some grub. Let's see. I will take. I'll have some salt rice. And. A couple pieces of bread for the road. And let's see, how am I. Bargain restore health. You know what? Probably don't need that. <laughs> Daedra Heart. I guess we're just gonna call it an even trade, huh? Alright, that sounds good to me. What's the uh, latest rumor? The word I hear is that a team of smugglers are working out of a cave in the hills south of Margan. Really? A uh, little advice? If you do the crime, pay the fine. Don't do the time. You might think a little hard labor isn't a bad price to pay, but while you're breaking rocks for the Empire, 
you lose the edge in your useful skills. And it takes a long time to get back to where you were before. I see. Any secrets? It's not really a secret since he shows it to anyone who expresses the slightest interest. But Miles Gloriosus downstairs is one of those Daedric swords. Very impressive and very heavy. I can't imagine how I could wield it. One wild swing and I would be stumbling in whatever direction it was moving. Huh. Interesting. I might want to go ask him about that. But after I, uh... Eat some heather. <laughs> and some bread. Scales, mmm. Scamp skin, delicious. Let's not do that. And uh, some healthy bitter greens. Alright. Downstairs, huh? Let's talk to this guy about Daedric's sword. Oh, uh, huh. Maybe he's not here right now. Or maybe he's over here. You're not the guy. Are you the guy? No. I like your... Nice kicks, girl. What do you want, Nord? Who are you? My name is Aram. My background is my own to know, but not to tell. It's your trade. I don't know if I can trust you yet, Vidar. I really don't have time for this, so make it quick. Alright. We'll be seeing you around. Ashlander. Locked. Say your business. Ah, this must be the guy. Yeah, Miles. Hey, Miles. Hello there, Vidar. I'm Miles Gloriosus, probably the greatest warrior of all time. Here in Margan on a heroic quest to save this fine town from the nefarious sort of blight creatures that are escaping through the ghost fence. I suppose I could take some time out of my very busy schedule to answer a few questions from an obvious admirer such as you. Well, you know what? There is something about you that I do admire. I heard that you had a really nice sword. Mm, little secret? A number of potions are available that can boost one's strength in a pinch. But if you can afford it, I recommend carrying a bottle of Flynn for such an occasion. It's a well-aged spirit from my province of Cyrodiil. It is not just for expensive dinners. It dramatically increases strength without dulling your other faculties. And it's light. Yes, um, what's your background? I started off as almost as much of a nobody as you, so don't feel shockingly overwhelmed at my magnificence. Yes, indeed, I am perhaps the greatest warrior in the world today. I think perhaps one day you will work hard... If you work hard, you could reach my level of perfection. Not really, but it's something I like to say to people to be polite. I am truly a wonderful fellow, aren't I? Yeah, yeah, um... Hmm... Little advice? Don't get trapped in a conversation with Andis upstairs. She will talk your ear off. It might be different if she had something interesting to say, but it's usually her political opinions of the Skyrim nobili nobility. Okay. How about some lore? Over the millennia, Tamriel in general, and the eastern shore in specific, have been invaded by the legions of the Akaviri from their homeland across the sea. While they are ferocious and savage fighters, we have repelled their assault every time, though the, although the Empire always keeps a wary eye to the east. <sighs> shields? The two basic shields style are the standard shield and the much larger and heavier tower shield. Use the bigger shield if you have the strength and endurance. Different materials are heavier and lighter, but your actual effectiveness with the shield depends on your skill in the light, medium, or heavy armored fighting styles. Hmm. Rumor? Have you seen the seer in the shrine? He's supposed to be very good, but I have my doubts. He told me I would learn a valuable lesson in arms at the hands of a stranger, as if anyone could teach me anything that I do not already know about weapons. Hmm. Not sure. What else to say? 
Oh well, that's really there's really only Andis Trade House, Red Run Outpost, and Towers by the Shrine. It's well the Shrine itself, of course. You know, what? I have a feeling I'm gonna talk to you again in the future. What's this about? Take it easy, Miles.